Hello and welcome to Unit 3 of the course. The topic for this unit is the box counting dimension. It's a different notion of dimension, slightly different, than the self-similarity dimension that we covered in Unit 1. As we'll see, the box counting dimension is a little bit more concrete, it's easier to specify an algorithm for its calculation, and it's applicable to irregular fractals, fractals that aren't exactly self-similar, the sorts of fractals that we encounter in nature all the time. Uh, another thing about the box counting dimension is that this is going to serve as sort of a bridge or a starting point as we start to think about scaling more generally. So scaling and fractal behavior not only in concrete geometric objects, but in processes that unfold in time and in statistical distributions. So that'll be coming up later in the course, and this will kind of be the transition, the key mathematical background that'll help us transition to that. Um, lastly, in this introductory video, I want to um, just issue a little warning that calculating the box counting dimension and kind of getting a feel for it involves a little bit of tedium. Um, I usually try to avoid this, but sometimes a little bit of, of, of tedium, a little bit of work, I think is essential to like really understanding a mathematical idea. And box counting dimension is one of those times. So it's not going to be terrible, but there will be just a little bit of um, a tedium, a little bit of work, some exercises that you'll have to do. But when you get through it, we'll have a really good understanding of the box counting dimension. So to get started, before we dive into the box counting dimension, I want to think a little bit more about why we even need dimensions. What's wrong with just length and area? So what's wrong with the idea of length and area? Why can't we apply these notions meaningfully to most fractals? Well, here's a way to think about this. So here's the Koch curve again. And we could ask, what's the length of this? How long is the Koch curve? Well, we saw in uh, Unit 1, we did a little calculation, that as we go through the steps of constructing this, the length just gets longer and longer and longer. And so I would say, in a certain sense, the length is infinity, or maybe undefined. It just keeps growing. And that seems a little weird. I mean, we'd like for this to have a length, maybe, but it's so jaggedy, so wiggly, that the length turns out to be infinite. So that's cool and interesting, but maybe not so helpful if we want to describe the shape, quantify it, do some math with it. Similarly, we could ask, well, what about the area? What's the area of this? Well, the area <coughs> is going to be zero, because this is made up of lines, and lines are one-dimensional, and the lines, I mean, they, they it just, you know, no amount of line sort of gets to have an area. So the area for this would be zero. So on the one hand, uh, we've got, a, yes, it's a fractal, but it's a relatively straightforward geometric object. It's got some complications, but it seems like we ought to be able to do something mathematically with this. Um, it's not infinite. I mean, yes, it has infinite length, but it fits between my hands. Uh, it has zero area, but it does kind of seem to take up some space because it's bumpy. And so uh, this situation is pretty unsatisfactory. We want to be able to do more than just say, well, if you think about it as a line, it's infinite. If you think about it as an area, it's zero. And so the answer is, right, so length, that means we're assuming it's one-dimensional. Area means we're assuming it's two-dimensional. And the answer is, well, it's not either of those. It's a different sort of dimension. And so we need to think about, get the dimension right in order for us to be able to talk about the size, length or area or something else. And so that's something that the box counting dimension um, will do. It will tell us what the dimension is, and it will also let us think um, about how to talk about the size, in a certain sense, of these types of sets in a way that's going to be a lot more satisfactory than this. So in the next video, we'll get started with the box counting dimension, and we'll start slow, and as you probably guessed, we're going to be counting up a bunch of boxes. It's a tiny bit tedious, but it's the uh, best way, I think, to get a really good understanding of these important ideas.